Hi again, everybody. Back in my studio. Um, I cleaned everything up from the last project, and now we're going to put together our mini art museum. So the shoe box that I showed you in the first day uh, with all the uh, pictures of the other artists' work, it's actually a Xerox copy. It's not really their artwork. I'm gonna take them down and I'm gonna show you how to put up your art, like I do with my art, into our mini art museum. So every little piece that I made with you, I shrunk it down with a Xerox machine, and now I have little mini, mini art to go in our mini art museum. Plus I have some surprises. So each little piece that we did together is the same one that I did with you, and I cut them out. And now we're gonna show you how to put them together in your mini art museum. And also I wanna talk about you titling them, giving them a title. So I'll be back in one minute to show you what it will look like step-by-step step into our shoe box so that you have your own mini art museum. Plus again, a couple of surprises. So I'll see you back here. So what I did was that I took the shoe box that had all of the art that was hanging inside and I took down the art. This is called an installation when museums decide that they wanna change out art. So I kinda of cheated a little in a good way. I took a photograph of what it looked like before so that you now can see all of the art is down. We're gonna have a new installation. Now for you guys, you won't be putting up art and taking it down. You might make a second art museum, but for me, I decided just to like clean it up a little so we can get ready to now uh, display the art. And what happened was that in the beginning when I took a uh, photograph, I had my shoe box. You don't have to paint yours. If you don't have house paint or you wanna keep the walls like a nice brown, cause a lot of times that is what an art museum, it's got a nice neutral color. But what I did was I took some house paint and I painted the inside cause I really wanna show you different ways that you could decorate your mini art museum. So um, also a lot of times shoe boxes have like holes in them. So if you want to keep the holes, it's kind of cool to have like a window or that could be your own separate uh, art piece. A lot of museums though, they don't have windows in there. So just know that they don't want the light to come in. All right, we're going to get started. I'm going to introduce you again to all the artists that you met so we can review before we go ahead and place the art on the walls of our mini art museums. When we first started, we met Pablo Picasso. And don't forget that when you look at the lesson plan sheets that go with each lesson, it will explain his name, a little bio about the artist, uh, some information and step by step. So not only with the videos, you'll be able to um, follow along and pause. One of Picasso's abstract portraits and remember cubism and cubism will be one of the vocabulary words that come with the lesson plan. So a lot of different shapes that Picasso was really one of the um, co-founders of this sort of art piece. And don't forget his saying, he was a poet, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. So that was our first artist and we'll hang up his art. The second artist that you met this week was Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat. He did not have as many names as Picasso, but one of his favorite paintings was one of Picasso's uh, artwork. Basquiat, I want to show you this. This is one of his paintings. He loved the crown. He thought of himself as a king. This is a very cool book. This book is called Life Doesn't Frighten Me. And it's written by a very, very famous woman, Maya Angelou. And I totally recommend going to the library or maybe you can download. She writes poetry to Jean-Michel Basquiat's art. Just beautiful. The third artist that you met, Frida Kahlo from Mexico. 
and Frida, we did collage. So we took a lot of different pieces. This is a photograph of Frida. Absolutely beautiful. This is one of her artworks that we studied and the one that I made a copy of, you know, did my own version of her collage. She loves animals, birds, and again, her poetry. I paint self-portraits because I am so often alone, because I am the person that I know best. And I think that's very interesting. You know, I've spent a lot of time here alone in my, my art studio. And then the other artist, Zhang Xiaoging. John Xiaoging from China. This is a self-portrait photograph of him and his beautiful artwork, Big Family. This is another one that we didn't study, but you really can see very serious. And in the lesson plan, you can read more about his bio and his life and what is going on. I just love just the simple, simplest amount of color. The last artist that you guys studied was Alexander Calder. That is also a photograph of him. And we made these really fun wire portraits. So portraits don't just have to be crayon or pencil or, or uh, paint, chalk or oil pastel. You can also do sculpture, sculpture as well. All right. So. I'm going to join you or you're going to join me in a minute back in the studio and we're going to do um, put the whole thing together from above. All right. I'll see you in a minute. That was a little silly again I was uh, speeding up and everything but I needed you to see how we could place the pieces uh, for the reinstallment of the art by Miss Suzanne one of the most important things in art is titling making a sentence or a word about your art something that means something to you that represents what your art is and sometimes you have no idea what it is until you're done creating so for my what's picasso but my version of picasso i put the saying four moods like i had four different moods and the reason that i did that is if i looked at my artwork i could see four different faces in the drawing that i did so my title for that is four moods. For um, my Basquiat, Miss Suzanne's version, I wrote, life sometimes does scare me. Because in the book that Maya Angelou wrote, her poetry, life doesn't scare me, I kind of thought that maybe sometimes it does. So that's my title. And then I wrote, artist and Miss Suzanne with a date. Now, for my version of Jean, I wrote uh, side by side because I love how he talks about big family. And to me, this looked like a big brother that's like next to a sister. So I kind I really like that. Um, for my um, Frida Kahlo version over here, I wrote, today I am happy. And so I put that on and I'm going to just glue it. It doesn't always have to be underneath. It could be on a different wall or above or something. And then the last one, that Calder, which is the wire, I wrote floating in place. So instead of floating in space, I thought I would put floating in place place. There isn't really a lot of room. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down below and you'll see that sometime in museums that you'll have the artwork. You have to figure out where is it? So you can see my mini art museum. I had so much fun creating this this week and uh, I look forward to possibly meeting you in the future. Um, I have some other stuff that I would love to show you. So uh, maybe creating your own bench 
out of origami. That's always fun. Uh, I made a little prototype before. So I've got the origami bench, which you saw in the picture. And then also you can learn how to create wood. That's a very cool thing. And that's also what I had earlier was the wood floor at the very bottom of the museum. And then um, my little surprise is to find a uh, some sort of um, night light or book light. They're really, they're easy to find, you know, sometimes a dollar store might have it and you can decorate with lights and that really makes it look real. So anyway, this was really fun and I hope you guys enjoy. The lesson plans are there with every single one at the Flushing Town Hall uh, Global Arts for Global Kids and I'll see you soon, bye.